Have you taken your car to a shop lately and it still doesn't seem to run right? You won't believe what I found on this 2009 Toyota Camry with 150,000 miles and it's the reason you should stay close to this channel, making sure to subscribe and hitting that like button. Per my customer's report, this Toyota Camry has been to two shops and a dealership and at one of those, they replaced the spark plugs and the coilovers during an oil change. She stated that the check engine light came on and then went off. During my inspection, I found that the coilover connectors were simply slid on using friction to hold them in place. The connector housing tab broke off, which is used to hold the connector in place. Placing the connectors on this way could make a bad connection and potentially cause a misfire with the dreaded code of P0300 to P0304. Worst yet, this could potentially harm the engine. What I found fascinating is that they didn't even use the zip tie hack where you pull the zip tie and lock in the connector housing on the coil over. I soon found out that evening why they didn't use the zip tie trick. The coil over connector housings had so much heat fatigue that they were brittle and literally breaking into pieces as I worked on them. They required replacement ASAP and the shops should have caught that. Now please know that there are good shops out there and good techs out there, but sometimes there's bad shops or techs in a hurry. You can't judge all shops for the errors of a few guys. This is the reason I implore you to DIY and learn how to double check a shop's work or at least know what they are talking about. Learning these skills will save you time, money, and even your engine. And don't worry guys, I will be here making more DIY videos for you. If you're gonna take on this job, you don't need any special tools and it's very simple. I'm gonna show you and I'm also gonna show my daughter how to replace this connector towards the end of the video. The link to the connector housings is in the description. Just click it and you can purchase it right from Amazon. From left to right, I'm working on cylinder two and the coilover where it receives the connector is full of debris as that connector broke all over the place and left stuff in there. So I'm using a thin screwdriver to make sure that it's all cleared out because I need that connector to slip in gently and click in. There should not be any force needed to do this. If you're having any type of pushback, something is wrong and it needs to be cleaned out. Moving from left to right on cylinder number three, that coilover connector is gonna be so brittle that you'll notice it'll break into a bunch of pieces in my hand. Now, for what we're gonna do here, this is actually a good thing. The more it breaks, the better it is for us since we wanna get down to the bare leads with the crimp down connectors on them. Now, those silver connectors there that you see, that's what we want to get down to. Before you start this work, I highly suggest you take some photos so that you can refer back to them. Now, these leads cannot be mixed up. If you mix up these leads, you will cause misfires and potential engine damage. I can't stress enough how important it is for you not to mix up any of the leads into the connector. If you get mixed up, please refer back to the picture that you probably took at the beginning of the process. If you didn't take a picture, some cars, you can look at the other connectors and see the lead color code that goes into them. That doesn't work for every car. So please make sure you take a picture before you start this process. Now, since I took out the connector facing up with the tab facing up, the tab that breaks that I showed earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and keep my cables the same way that they came out and now place them back into their respective holes and push them hard until I hear a loud click. Now I'm going to go ahead and place in this white spacer thing that I'm sure somebody in the comments will tell me what it's called, but you're just going to go ahead and place it with the little square opening tab hole, whatever that's called, facing down. And you're going to push it till you hear a loud click. Once you put that all together, make sure that there's no debris inside the coil over. And if there is, just like there is here, clean it out. Now let's show my daughter how to do this. Can I pull this out? Yeah, you can squeeze hard and you want to break it, if it'll break. So 
It didn't break at all. Mm -mm. Okay, right there. You can underneath that hole. That's right. Pull up. Pull up. There you go. Okay, right at the bottom part of the connector. Go ahead. Go ahead. Right at the bottom part of the connector. You're gonna see these little tabs right there. You can break them, and those metal portions of the connector are gonna come right out there you go just like that just like that you can break that connector Got it. you're gonna break the bottom piece all right now you can go ahead and pull you see that little red part you can pull that all out go ahead pull it out should come out there you go keep pulling there you go there you go now the whole thing will start breaking just like that. If you're lucky enough that it breaks, it'll break just like that and it'll clear out the connectors. Now even though we broke those little retainers that hold the leads in place inside the connector housing, this thing just wouldn't let go. So I had to take it back for my daughter and start digging in there with a flathead screwdriver. This happens from time to time. Don't be scared to break that stuff up. Just make sure to break the plastic and don't puncture or mess up any of the leads with the silver connectors crimped on them. Now, as we break this housing, you'll notice that I keep those leads in place so that I don't mix them up. I know exactly how they came out. I take a quick look at the color code and I put them in a position where I put the new housing in the same way it came out. <sighs> that up just like that By replacing only the housing, you don't have to crimp, you don't need any special tools, and it makes this overall process really easy. Okay. Okay. That part is done.